It's day 22 and it's the day where I show you how you can be a little bit sneaky and use other people's code in your own work, making really complicated things much, much easier. Yes, we're going to look at libraries. So libraries are collections of code that other people have written and there are libraries for pretty much anything you could think of. In fact, most video games are developed with massive, massive libraries, often called engines, that allow them to generate 3D graphics and put reflections on water and stuff like that. We're going to start a little bit smaller than that, though, by just generating some random numbers, because random numbers are the basis of most games. Now, the way we import a library is by, first of all, using the keyword import. And this should always be one of the first lines in your code. I'm then going to import random. Now, this might look familiar to you because on day 14, when I asked you to make that rock, paper, scissors code, I gave you a line of code that did something similar to this. It brought in some code from somewhere else and actually replaced the input function that you were using. We're going to be bringing in the random library and the random library has a few different ways of generating random numbers. The most common way is this. So here I'm creating a variable called my number. And I'm making it equal to a random number given to us by the rand int function, short for random integer. Now we can give this two arguments, the lowest value that could be picked and the highest value that could be picked. So this will give us a number between one and a hundred at random. It'll be different every single time. I'm printing that out just to show you how it works. If I run it, it's giving me the number 26. If I click it again, it'll give me a different number randomly, 57 in this case. Again, 35. Again, 62. Every time I click that button, it's giving me a brand new random number between 1 and 100. And this is code I haven't written, which is amazing, because generating random numbers is a real difficult job. But what can I do with this? Well, when we have built games in the past, we've had to hard code the value that they were looking for. Think about the higher or lower number guessing game that we built a few days ago. That number was hard coded in. If our user was clever enough, they could have just gone into the source code and got the answer right in one go. With this, we can generate a number that even we don't know and get the user to search for that. This actually forms the basis of most gaming, a random generation that we then have to access and work against. Common errors you might see are things like this. Looks good, but when I run it, it errors and it says rand int is not defined. And well, yeah, it isn't. And you might be thinking, why? Why is this being weird? Well. It's because of the way that libraries work. When I import code from somewhere else, the names of the functions and the names of the variables might be similar to what I've used. So to stop that being a problem, the way I access the methods from another library is by putting the name of the library and a dot before the function. In this case on line three, randint is a function from the random library. So it needs to have a random dot before it. This tells the computer, go in the random library, get randint, and give me a number between one and a hundred. And once that's done, boom, it's working fine. Here's a common problem people get into when using random numbers with loops. In this case, I just want 10 random numbers printed out on the screen, which should work okay. Let's try it. Hmm. Now, it's printed out, the number 10, a lot. Let's run it again. It's picking the same number. Now, random is random, so it could be doing this. But actually, it's more likely there's a problem with our code. Take a look, pause the video, and see if you can fix this. Well, the problem here is quite straightforward. When I'm generating my random number, I'm doing it before the loop. So I'm asking for one random number and storing it in a variable. Then I'm saying 10 times, print it out. 
At no point in that loop am I asking for a new random number. So actually, this line of code here needs to be cut and needs to be pasted before we print the number out. Each time the loop resets now, it will generate a new random number. So now I can generate 10 random numbers between 1 and 100 that are going to be random values. As ever, I provided you with a buggy piece of code that you need to debug and fix. Pause the video and go and try that for me. Okay, here's your challenge for today. Go and get that code for the higher and lower number guessing game that we've already built. And I'd like you to change it. I'd like the number generated to be completely random between one and a million. This makes that game a little bit more fun because it's always now going to be a different number or at least a different random number each time. When you're done, share your code with us in the community by publishing it and using the hashtag replit 100 days of code. Share it on social media, try and get people to play your game where they can't now cheat. Today, we've looked at taking other people's code. How do we create these functions ourselves? Tomorrow, subroutines.